Hey, this is Samantha here from RecipeThis.com and the voice behind the Popper Kitchen Gadgets podcast, Magic with Gadgets. And today we are dehydrating watermelon. Well, before we dive into this recipe, I just wanted to suggest that you head over to RecipeThis.com. We've got more than 1,200 kitchen gadget recipes, including recipes for the air fryer, instant pot, slow cooker, soup maker, bread maker, microwave, ninja foodie, and many others. We also have a free weekly newsletter, which you can find on the homepage of RecipeThis.com, or you can find it on RecipeThis.com forward slash newsletter. And there you can get our best kitchen gadget recipes sent to your inbox every Friday morning. But before we jump into this watermelon recipe, I want to show you how the dehydrator works that we're going to be using for our watermelon slices so that you can get your head around the way it works. And this is the tool that I picked up from Amazon. So basically this is a dehydrating stacking shelf thing that you can use for your Ninja Foodie to be able to dehydrate in it. Obviously you could use this for dried herbs, even dried flowers, fruit, vegetables, whatever you wanted. So it, it comes uh, pretty flat packed and I was trying to figure out how to use it. Dominic's kindly stacked it for me now. But let me show you how it works then what you've got to do is you've got to hook it in and then you've kind of got a, a hook on each side like that and then what happens is uh, you can put your food in each of these layers and what it does is you can do a lot more dehydrating than you could if you just used a typical air fryer basket. So if you hear that it's really really steady. And then you've got your final one at the top. It's still hard getting used to it. This is my first time using it by the way. I haven't had a much of a test run because I want you to see what it's like if you haven't used it before. one that I'm struggling with. There we go. That seems much better now. Like that, just to show that it's properly in place. And then you would simply load it in to your Ninja Foodie and then you can dehydrate whatever you want to dehydrate. And that's the simple tool that you can use for the job. So what do you need to dehydrate watermelon in a, a dehydrator or using the air fryer? Well, it's simple as this. You just need a watermelon. And obviously a knife that's sharp enough to slice through it. And that is literally all you need. You then load it into your dehydrator and then you're cooking it until all the juices have gone and you've got dried watermelon. But of course, my husband is a chef and he's brilliant at showing you how to do the best prep. So I'm going to uh, pass you over to Dominic and he's going to show you how to slice up the watermelon and then how to load it into the dehydrator before cooking in the Ninja Foodie. Now over to Dominic. So the watermelon we've got is really small. It's not like the one you see you've seen Dirty Dancing. It's watermelons are just coming into season in the UK as we're doing this. And they're still really, really good because the thing about doing dehydrated watermelon is you can do a lot of it. Um, you can get a lot of it out of just one slice because you're doing it into little segments that you don't need an actual lot of watermelon. And I often get asked, why, why, why would you dehydrate a watermelon? The whole point of a watermelon is the water. Well, when you dehydrate a watermelon and you're losing the water, what you're left with is the sugar that comes with the fruit. And it's absolutely delicious. 
and people that have tried our recipe have said that they call it uh, melon candy because you've lost the uh, water element and it's just like candy and it's absolutely yummy and a great source of natural sugar and it's perfect for just putting a bit of your watermelon to one side each summer dehydrating it and then just um, enjoying it as it is and of course the other reason to dehydrate it is watermelon's not in season forever you can dehydrate it and then save it for later on in the year when you want some watermelon and then as you can see here dominic's going with a really good equal slice on this watermelon because you don't want some bits that are too thick and too, some that are too small and we found the best results come from when you do the watermelon with the skin still on like you see here and wow look at all that watermelon that is literally one small watermelon with a few of the softer bits discarded i mean that is absolutely amazing so then once you've sliced it up it's ready for loading into your dehydrator some of these slices are quite big so it'd be interesting to see how many are on each level you know if you've got smaller slices then it will vary somewhat the note, the, the watermelon does shrink quite a lot as it dehydrates, so it won't look like that size once you're done. It shrivels up quite a lot because remember watermelon is majority water, so if you lose the water, you're not going to have a lot. Then of course, see how many you can get on each. Because like I say, they're, they're going to, um, decrease in size anyway so just get as much will, will fit on each one without them being on top of each other and as you can see what Dominic's doing is he's mixing up some uh, small medium and large ones to make sure that they all fit together and then add your next layer and wow that looks amazing and if you look on that top, top layer, you can see the mixture between small and large. Like you've got your large one in the middle and you've got some small ones on the edge and it just makes it better. And another tip to do is, you know, if you're wanting to uh, decrease the cook time, is to put the bigger ones at the top layers and the small ones at the bottom so that you've got an equal dehydrate. And then also to notice, it totally depends to how juicy your watermelon is to how long they take. I've known people report that it takes 24 hours to dehydrate watermelon and we've done it before in our air fry oven in seven hours. So I recommend that you start with seven hours and then you can turn it and you can see how long it takes and just kind of keep an eye on it and do it in two hour intervals until it's completely dehydrated. And then you want to turn on your Ninja Foodie or whichever dehydrator you're using you lid down and then you're looking for a temperature of uh, 55 celsius and then you're looking to start with on seven hours and then you can check on it and see how much longer it needs or if it's done by that point and then press start <coughs> So let's check on our watermelon, shall we? Oh wow, now that's the shock. That's like uh, when you do um, some brisket and you're like, where's the rest of it gone? Because it really does shrink. And some of it does actually fall down as well. I can notice that one of the pieces from the top's actually fallen down. But it does taste good. And it's a great way to use up your watermelon because it gets in season and you have loads of watermelon and you enjoy it and then you realize you're stuck with lots of leftover watermelon once the kids are bored of it and it's just perfect for that or an alternative for sweets or candy to give to them is some watermelon so the watermelon when it comes out it's kind of like this and you can tell when it's done because it's lost its stickiness and all water's drained from it you get some bits that are better than others and that's why I suggest doing quite a bit. For example, that bit, it's kind of shriveled up quite a lot. So generally speaking, the ones that are shriveled up the most are the smaller slices. 
and the ones that have kept their texture tend to be the medium slices. So you can go with this and let's say you've got some of your larger slices that are not quite done, you can either swap the shelves around or you can put it on for another three hours if you want and then just see how it's doing. So that's uh, dried watermelon in the Ninja. Thanks so much for watching and don't forget to subscribe to the Recipe This family. You can find us on Twitter, Facebook and Pinterest. We also have a weekly newsletter at recipethis.com forward slash newsletter where we share with you our latest kitchen gadget recipes, what we're cooking in the Milner kitchen and so much more. As well as this, we recommend that you subscribe to our YouTube channel and then whenever we have a new video, you will be the first to know. And if you want to know about all our future videos, then I recommend you hit the bell for instant notifications. But even better, we now have a podcast. It's called Magic with Gadgets. Simply search Magic with Gadgets on your favourite podcast player and you'll find us there.